Hello and welcome to Bud's RPG Review, where I give my thoughts on role-playing games, card games and board games. Today's retro review is 1988's Snake Pipe Hollow for RuneQuest 3rd Edition by Chaosium. First a bit of history. Snake Pipe Hollow was originally published in 1979 and was one of the first adventures ever released for RuneQuest. It is a scenario book designed for a band of 6 to 10 experienced adventurers of which it is recommended that at least one be a healer. Ok to the book itself. The cover is another classic by Summer Max creator Steve Purcell of the Brew Priest Phyllith, more on him later. The book itself consists of a 56 page scenario and a 12 page pullout with lots of stats and information as well as a complete map of the hollow. Inside we are introduced with the invocation, May Zarak Zaran bless this book and protect us against the chaos within it. Zarak Zaran is the Uz god of hate so what lies within must be particularly terrible for their name to be invoked. The introduction includes a few words from Chaosium and follows with common knowledge about Snake Pipe Hollow and a brief prehistory. Snake Pipe Hollow was formed during the I Fought We Won battle between Chaos and Mortals during God Time. Names such as nobody who took part in it recalls any details other than the fact that they won. It is named after the Snake Pipe, a wondrous artifact that was held within the Earth Temple here and that is reputed to either be lost or buried within. Snake Pipe Hollow is situated at Dragon Pass north of Sartar and has a reputation for being an incredibly dangerous place to go. It is known as the Heart of Chaos. We have a map of the portion of Sartar where everything takes place and the usual deluxe rules section followed by some scenarios and adventure hooks that are presented as a way of having adventurers investigate the area. The stats for the various people involved are given in the pullout section. Each room in the hollow is broken down neatly into seven pieces. Initial die rolls which determines whether certain events will be taking place. First glance, which is a rough description of the room, including the rock type. Closer looks, which gives specific details of the location. Exits, which details, well, exits from the room. Search, which details what can be gained given the requisite amount of time is invested. Traps, which obviously describes what, if any, traps are there. Denizens, which gives details of room inhabitants. Treasure, for any treasure found. And miscellaneous notes for anything not otherwise covered. The scenario itself starts with descriptions of the various rock and fossil formations that are presented throughout the hollow. What then follows is the bulk of the Caves of Chaos and the denizens that lie within. Broadly speaking, Snake Pipe Hollow can be grouped into three areas. The Outer Caves, which contain some threats such as Big Club the Chaos Giant, Dragon Snails and some Ogres. Some of these can be parlayed with or can even be helpful. Then there's the Inner Caves, which contains very dangerous foes such as Phyllith, a brew priest of Malia and his foul herd, as well as a large number of bound disease spirits that do his bidding and horrific temple they've built. There's a small but powerful group of scorpion men and even basilisk. We then have the Deep Caves, which are inhabited by a race of pale eyeless humanoids called the Veralzi, as well as many powerful spirits and chaos monstrosities. Also sprinkled throughout is a generous array of the likes of Gorps and Rubble Runners. Additionally, deep within the hollow is a dormant godling, Baroshi. The adventurers could possibly free Baroshi and become his fledging cult. The adventurers can even find the famous snake pipe itself if they persevere. The reward is great throughout, but the danger is commensurate. Snake Pipe Hollow doesn't feel like anything you would be able to buy these days. It's not just a dungeon crawl, but THE dungeon crawl, from a time where there simply wasn't anything else around like it. It's put together in such a meticulous way that I felt nothing was left to chance. It's lush with detail throughout, and everything that needs to be statted out is statted out completely. The genius of Snake Pipe Hollow, however, is how it fits together. Inside the caves you have various denizens and factions that could easily be in a constant state of conflict with one another, but the reasons they haven't done so are listed and make perfect game sense. I have to say, I really enjoyed Snake Pipe Hollow, but there are a few minor things that I didn't like. The font size is minuscule throughout, and the artwork is okay in some places and awful in others, but these things didn't spoil my enjoyment. Also, at 56 pages it does feel a little short, but none of these things were enough to sound my experience. In conclusion, I feel a Snake Pipe Hollow is a classic that has stood the test of time, and still easily goes toe to toe with modern day scenarios. It was clearly a labour of love for the writers, and this shines throughout. It is an extremely difficult scenario, but not an impossible one, and it would take a party with their absolute wits about them to not suffer a multitude of horrific deaths within, but it is great enough that they would keep on coming back for more each time, and I imagine the satisfaction they would have at finally beating it would be something they would speak about for many, many years. I give Snake Pipe Hollow a well-deserved 9 out of 10. If you enjoyed this review, please thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also, don't forget to check out my other reviews. But out.